This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. It is America's first real terrorist organization and mixes violence with hate. A Jew is even worse than a Its legacy was passed down from father to son and has one major goal. White power. White power. Jews are like parasites. If you don't bite you, you punish them. It's the same way I feel about other races. An extreme new generation has taken up the KKK's radical message. I'm the big bad racist and hater. They are the Imperial Clans of America, the IKA. The new face of the Ku Klux Klan. Death before dishonor. We'd rather die than do something we don't believe in. mansions to the banks of the Ohio River. It's the perfect picture of Southern charm. The fighting spirit of the South is seen in every corner where the Confederate flag symbolizes rebel pride. But a darker force lies just out of sight in the resurgence of an infamous brotherhood, the Ku Klux Klan. The Klan, of course, is the oldest terrorist group in this nation. Founded in the 1800s, the Ku Klux Klan, or KKK, exists in 39 states of the Union and has over a dozen chapters overseas. They take their name from the Greek word kuklos, meaning circle, and the Scottish word clan, meaning family. Where everybody's just a half-breed running around the country, and nobody's white, nobody's black, nobody's Mexican, or half, 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 all this. You look at the Klan, and it pretty much comes down to guttural hatred. These Klan groups tend to attract people with all kinds of problems, typically kind of brimming with anger. We don't put up with swearing, we don't put up with killing, and we sure damn ain't gonna put up with you. What a power! 34 chapters now claim the Klan's mantle. One of the KKK's strongest factions is the Imperial Clans of America, or IKA. Holding rank as the second largest clan organization in the United States. Like the Klan, the IKA considers itself a Christian organization and says the Bible backs up their hateful beliefs. The Bible forbids in many places on race mixing, and Christ himself forbid it. And if we continue to do it, there will, won't be a right race. The Bible's not meant for the Asian or the Mexican or the mongrel or uh, the Negro or any other race but the white race. IKA's headquarters are here, secluded in the wooded hills of Kentucky outside Louisville. Known as the compound, it's the center of IKA activity. This is where I live. Ron Edwards is the co-founder of the IKA. Edwards believes that a bigger clan means more muscle to achieve white supremacy in America. The KKK used to only admit Protestant Christians from the South, but Ron found that limiting. He decided to open membership to any white person, regardless of religion, who hates other races. Abortion! White racial genocide! I was really big on pushing it to unite all of our people, whether they were atheists, whether they were Christian identity, or Baptist, Catholic, or Protestant, or Odinist, to just bring everybody as one. Ron has made his home, the compound, a sanctuary for white supremacists of all kinds. The IKA has openly been meeting here for seven years, though the details of those gatherings are closely guarded. The 15-acre compound is gated and surrounded by barbed wire. 
Security is tightly enforced by IKA militia. This is our main security shack, the front entrance. Anybody that comes in or out has to stop here to be searched. We search their vehicle, search their persons. Uh, no drugs, anything illegal of any kind, no weapons are allowed. 21-year-old Joel Gaddis is a recent IKA recruit. Raised Methodist, Joel joined the Klan at age 19. He was attracted by Ron Edwards' open philosophy. I had looked through some different groups. Uh, I liked the IKs, ideals, and beliefs the most. He quickly climbed the ladder of the IKA to a position known as Nighthawk. The IKA is structured as a paramilitary organization. Recruits come to the compound to receive an education in white supremacist teachings. I tell people George Washington did not cross the Delaware with a boatload of Haitian. <laughs> From the onset, recruits are indoctrinated with expressions of fanatical hatred. This right here is the do flag. Usually when we have big events, people will wipe their feet on it, spit on it, whatever they feel like doing to it when they, when they go, before they go into the guard shack. That's basically what, what it's here for. Just everybody from the IK, all the skinheads, we all hate Jews, so. But Ron Edwards and his recruits claim they aren't engaged in an active war against other races. And that the old style lynchings and terrorism aren't their mission. We're not the Klan back in the 20s, the, the 40s, 60s, or 70s. Uh, the IK has never, ever told anybody to go out there and kill somebody or hang somebody. We're not out here beating people. We're very nonviolent, but if pushed, we can be. Every year, hundreds of Klansmen, skinheads, and other white supremacists flock to the IKA's headquarters to prepare them for the ultimate race war and celebrate white Over power. There. Anybody that hates a Jew and a nigger and a queer is down for us. In a three-day event called Nordic Fest, IKA recruiters actively work the crowds, selling them on the Klan's new face. Let's get recruiting so that if they do decide to mess with us, we can take out more of them. It's really been uh, considered the skinhead clan. 27-year-old Jared Hensley used to be one of those recruiters. He is covered in tattoos, proclaiming his credentials as a member of the master race. I got this clan fiery cross, and then uh, got the German eagle holding the swastika, and the SS bolts. A native of Ohio, Jared first came in contact with the clan in 2001 and was intrigued by Ron Edwards' progressive doctrine. They had both parts in there, was the skinhead and the clan, into one organization, so that's what appealed to me. That same year, Jared joined the IKA and became one of Ron Edwards' most dedicated and trusted members. But his support of the IKA's vision would take a violent turn on a southern summer night. Brandenburg, Kentucky, 40 miles outside of Louisville. It was July 2006. Jared Hensley and three other Klan members, Andrew Watkins, Josh Cowles, and Matt Roberts were aggressively recruiting new IKA members at the Meade County Fair. All four of these individuals had criminal records. Three of them had records for violent assaults on people. The men worked the fair hard, passing out pamphlets and making sure people knew they were with the Klan. As they recruited, they noticed a teenaged couple having an argument. To the Klansmen, the girl looked white. But her boyfriend, 16-year-old Jordan Gruber, looked Latino. Jared and Andrew Watkins broke up the argument, then turned their attention to the young boy. A fight pursued, having to be a 
non-white. We just got arrested. Jared refuses to reveal more about the incident on camera. But according to police reports, Jared and another IKA member knocked Gruber to the ground and started beating and kicking him with steel-toed boots. It shows the brazenness of this attack. It was in public at a county fair that had cops everywhere. Morris Dees is the founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center, or SPLC. They track and prosecute hate groups across the country. And when the police came up and arrested uh, these guys, Watkins said, hey, look, why are you arresting me? That's the illegal spick over there on the ground. Groover was taken to the hospital with a broken jaw and arm, cracked ribs, and multiple cuts and bruises. Back at IKA headquarters, Ron Edwards was called and told about the attack involving his members. I didn't know that they were there. Ron Edwards said he had nothing to do with the attack. Others disagree. Even though Ron Edwards did not send them to this specific fair, he was still responsible. Louisville, Kentucky. Home to the most exciting two minutes in horse racing. Home also to a new faction of the Ku Klux Klan, known as the IKA, Imperial Clans of America. The group has combined some of the KKK's oldest traditions with its own philosophy. The white race must be preserved and protected. The white race is the only race that has tried to breed itself out of existence. Uh, the Bible forbids in many places on race mixing, and if we continue to do it, there won't be a white race. This radical solidarity and fervent belief that only white makes right directly links the modern IKA to its hooded forebears. The KKK dates back to the Civil War. In 1865, it was founded by veterans of the Confederate Army in Tennessee. They fought against Reconstruction and any form of equal rights for blacks. Land's base grew in the southern U.S. and became notorious for lynchings, arson, and assaults. The Klan was responsible for, on the one hand, rolling back radical reconstruction and essentially making the imposition of Jim Crow laws possible. In 1871, the KKK was outlawed by Congress and went into hiding. But it resurfaced after World War I as European immigrants poured into the U.S. In the 1920s, it became very powerful politically, uh, not only with regard to black people. Of course, the Klan of the 20s grew to a membership of almost four million people. As the Klan grew, so did its lust for violence. May 31st, 1921, Tulsa, Oklahoma. A black man was accused of attacking a white woman. An angry mob, including Klan members, stormed an all-black neighborhood and began looting and burning businesses and homes. 26 blacks were murdered, along with 10 whites. 35 of Tulsa's city blocks were left in ruins. Less than three months later, the KKK held its first public rally in Tulsa. The Klan's numbers dropped during the Depression and World War II, but resurfaced during the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s. The Klan justified its actions with the worst racist stereotypes. Negroes were raping a lot of white women and uh, Basically, they were making a farce out of the Southern way of life and doing a lot of bad things. By 1963, Klan membership had reached an estimated 30,000 members. 
That same year, the KKK firebombed a Baptist church in Birmingham, Alabama, killing four young girls. The crime shocked the nation, causing the FBI to target the hate group. By 1974, the KKK's numbers plummeted to 1,500. But that didn't stop the Klan from unleashing another brazen act of terror. In 1981, two Klansmen in Mobile, Alabama, abducted and lynched a 19-year-old black man in retaliation for the unsolved murder of a white policeman. The public was horrified. The Klansmen were brought to trial and found guilty. One was sent to prison for life the other executed. Across the country, the KKK's membership dropped again. It is a scattered collection of little tiny groups, some 34, 35 different named clan organizations, you know, all of which say, you know, we are the one true clan and these other ones are all interlopers and fakers. But the seeds of racial hatred were stirring beyond the South. In the early 1980s, Ron Edwards and his family were living near the Humboldt Park neighborhood on Chicago's west side. It was a dramatic departure from the all-white neighborhood he moved from in Southern California. It was like a ghetto. You know, it's a really dangerous neighborhood. He experienced firsthand the violence between Hispanic and white gangs. I had to fight one day, a bunch of Latin kings all the way home. And I, I had never had nothing against any, any other races, you know, but all of a sudden then I'm seeing that I'm constantly being attacked for being white. And that's basically what it was. At 15, he joined a neighborhood gang with white supremacist leanings. I've come home with bullet holes on my car window from Puerto Rico and I'm driving home from work. They tried to shoot me, stabbed nine times. I got stabbed three times with an ice pick. I got stabbed in the skull, 38 stitches, cut my ear in half. Then, in 1986, Ron's 20-year-old brother, Billy, got in a fight with Hispanic gang members. He was picking his girlfriend up, and they come out there, and they started fighting. Billy was whipping three of them, and, uh, one shot the car with a 45 and shot him in the chest with 32. Billy died in the hospital later that night. He was like the love of my life, and he was so close to me. And when he died, it just, I mean, it tore a hole in my heart. I kind of lost my head uh, for almost a year. Hardened by grief. Ron turned to the Klan in 1989 to seek vengeance for his brother's death. And I seen this program called Race and Reason on public access TV. There are plenty of nasty Jews out there. Let's have a little white power here. And it was the Klan, they were talking about certain things. White power! White power. Hell the order! Ron joined the gang, embracing the ideology of the Ku Klux Klan, that whites were the chosen people and that the white man had to band together or risk extinction through racial mixing. You gotta be in the Klan to be able to be anything. In 1991, Ron moved to Kentucky, where the Klan had maintained a strong influence. There, he quickly moved up the ranks of the Federation of Klans, or FOK. Because this country needs an animal. Five years later, though, the FOK disbanded because of internal dissension. But Ron refused to abandon his vision of an all-white America. I said, well, I didn't join the Klan to sit in a rocking chair the rest of my life and just, you know, I said, I joined because I believe in this. Later that year, Ron met with several high-ranking FOK members. We set up a meeting in Paducah, Kentucky, and people come from, I think, 14 different states. They decided to form the IKA, a new clan that would survive and thrive into the 21st century. Ron was voted in to lead the IKA as Imperial Wizard. He immediately implemented his doctrine for the new clan. 
Ron believed there was strength in numbers. He convinced his fellow Klansmen that all white supremacists should join together under the IKA banner. I kept telling them we have to have unity, we have to have unity. We'll take neo-Nazis, conservative, Klan, whatever. It's that all whites should work together as a main goal. In September 1997, the IKA went public with a rally in Eddyville, Kentucky. But Ron had a vision to take the public face of the IKA and move it underground. If you go to public rally, it's not doing no good. It just makes you look bad. So if you have a private rally, you can control who comes. In 2000, Ron launched the first Nordic Fest, opening it only to white supremacists. We host Nordic Fest uh, every Memorial weekend. We barbecue, listen to music. We have speakers that will get up and they preach what they want to say, and Ron doesn't censor them. Is it hate to want your wife, your girlfriend, your mother to be able to walk down the street without any fear of a savage attacking her? No! Ron issued a rule for his modern day Klansmen arm yourselves. And if somebody comes by and shoots at you or tries to take your life because of what you believe, you know, take care of yourself. You do it, but don't do it unless you have to. Ron's message was clear. Be prepared to defend yourself, build the strength of the white race, and stay quietly out of sight. His tactics worked. By 2000, the IKA was on a roll with 30 chapters in 15 states and five chapters in other countries. In 2001, Jared Hensley joined the IKA. A skinhead with a criminal record of assault and a taste for violence, he sometimes rebelled against Ron's desire to keep a low profile. I'm more the in-your-face type people. By 2005, Jared had become a high-ranking IKA member. But this Klansman was a loose cannon. It was a matter of time before he eventually went off. Had not the police uh, come up and stopped them, they probably would have killed him. The Imperial Clans of America, or IKA, the second largest clan organization in the United States. Their heavily guarded headquarters are in the backwoods of Kentucky, outside Louisville. There, the new face of the KKK is preparing for battle against non-whites. Sooner or later, this country is going to have a civil war here. And we're probably picking up more members than normal because of certain situations, whether it's immigration or Obama, <laughs> you know. Country's in a powder keg state right now. Everything's so tense that the slightest thing could set off even a race war. All the groups will go up. The new clan believes its ultimate enemy is a shadow government run by a Jewish group called Zog. Zog stands for Zionist Occupied Government. That is the belief that the Jews run the government and the federal bank and media control the country. Why do you hate me? The IKA thinks that the white race is under attack, and they must band together to destroy Zog, or they will face extinction. We're headed downhill fast, and if we don't do something, we're shit out of luck. IKA gang members take cues from the military with their dress. The IKA were BDUs. We don't wear robes like most other clans wear. I mean, we do wear a robe, but that's just for ceremonies only. Also like the military, IKA uniforms come equipped with firepower. Armed Nighthawks, or guards, are spotted all over the compound. They are an important link in the IKA's strict hierarchy. The order is defined by secret titles that date back more than a century. The chief officer of the IKA is the Imperial Wizard, Ron Edwards. He's the Emperor, which would be, he's in charge of 
wherever the IK is, whether it's in the United States or Europe. Next in line, the Imperial Claylith, the IKA's version of the Vice President. And if something happened to the Imperial Wizard, then he would step up and take it. Beneath the Claylith are Grand Dragons in charge of a realm or state. Grand Titans are the head of a district within the state. Below them are Giants, then exalted Cyclops who had local claverns. It used to be churches or a cave or a, a courthouse or a, a barn where uh, nobody knew where the clan was meeting at the time. Secrecy has long been part of the clan's identity, and the IKA is no exception. They have a treasurer for bookkeeping, but he keeps his records just long enough to memorize them. And they burn it right after that's right there so they know and they don't keep no records of anything. But there are ways that IKA members announce their affiliation to the world, including their ink. That's heritage and beliefs. It's not put there to solely intimidate others, but this is what we believe, and we wear it to show that we're proud of what we believe. Imperial Clans of America, 33-6. Most members have the sign 33-6 tattooed onto their body. When the state police ask me, I always tell them it's my lucky number. But it's basically a clan code. K is the 11th letter of the alphabet. Three 11s equals 33, which equals KKK. The six stands for the sixth generation of the clan, which is how the IKA identifies itself in the gang's history. Ink isn't limited to just clan signs. White power imagery of all kinds is common. That's the executioner, and it says, uh, Aryan Justice, Death to Zod. There I got the brass knuckles and knife, the death head skull from Nazi Germany, swastika, right there, the web. Most members also mark themselves with the IKA crest. The crest contains traditional KKK imagery, which dates back more than 100 years, including the cross wheel. The cross wheel is the Christian cross formed out of four Ks, which stands for the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. The red circle is the blood of white people, the white field is the Caucasian race. Underneath the shield are Roman fosses, a weapon of bundled rods. The rods represent unity. One can be broken, but together they are indestructible. We have the IK crest here, and uh, usually only patch holders are allowed to have the crest. and shows that they're more dedicated, loyal, and uh, that they've, they've, they've taken a note to be around the rest of their life. So that's why I have that one. IKA recruitment is extremely selective. Candidates must fill out an extensive application, giving background information about themselves and their spouses. They must swear to be Caucasian and that they haven't been part of an interracial relationship. If accepted, they become a ghoul. Everybody has a minimum year before they're knighted and such that, you, that you're constantly tested and you learn, and you have to learn thoroughly about the history and the religious side of it before you're a full member. Ghouls pledge to keep their criminal records clean, to stay off drugs, and to prepare their mind and body for the race wars to come. They remain ghouls until the Imperial Wizard thinks they're ready to become full clansmen. Basically, you work your way up, and the more you do, and the longer you're around, the more respect you get, and you are in higher ranks. All members pay yearly dues of $40, which support the clan's operations, including Nordic Fest. <laughs> For three days, skinheads, Aryan Nation members, white anarchists, and other clansmen from all over the country live in a makeshift village. 
death and bloodshed are coming. The merchandise for sale here preaches messages of hate. The fest is billed as a family affair that includes children. We had 20, 30 kids out here sometimes while playing. Everybody brings their kids. The festival culminates in a cross and swastika lighting. Okay, clansmen, line up, single file. The ritual ceremony is considered sacred by the IKA. We stand in this circle to illuminate the light of Christ's word. Keeper of the flame. Will you accept this light and pass it on to another brother or sister? I will. In this footage rarely seen on television, the IKA allows our cameras to film their annual spring cross lighting. Clans the hope for Christ! For Christ! For Christ! For Christ! For the IKA! For the ceremony, a steel cross is wrapped in cloth, soaked in kerosene, then lit. Do not turn your back on the cross. This time, I'd like to ask Mr. Shealy if he would lead us in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Even though it stormed and hailed, we still had a rainbow. As the cross burns, there is a moment of silence. Then everyone gives the Nazi salute. The Imperial Clans of America. The IKA. One of the country's most powerful white supremacist groups and the new face of the Ku Klux Klan. July 2006. Brandenburg, Kentucky. High-ranking IKA officer Jared Hensley and three other members were recruiting new Klansmen at the Meade County Fair. Once you come up, uh, you know, out of the probation period and come patch over, you're a leader amongst yourself, so. And even the, even the probate members, we try to have them recruit. And... Jared and his fellow gang members had been drinking. Near the concession stands, they came across 16-year-old Jordan Gruber. Jordan was olive-skinned and looked Latino to the IKA members. The gang claims the Native American teen was arguing with his white girlfriend. They saw him, they walked over to him, they taunted him, they threw whiskey in his face. They threw him to the ground. Two of them kicked him in the head, busted his jaw, cracked some ribs. And had not the police uh, come up and stopped them, they probably would have killed him. Jared and his accomplice were arrested for the crime on the spot. They both pled guilty to assault and were sentenced to three years in prison. For Jared, prison was a shock. You're told what to do, when to do it, how to do it when to wake up, when you can eat, what to eat. Jared ended up serving only two years. But the Southern Poverty Law Center, or SPLC, which tracks hate groups, wasn't about to let the story end there. The Jordan Kruger case is alarming because it shows the violence that these groups are directing towards minorities. It also is alarming because it shows the effect of infusing and joining in skinheads, violent skinheads, steel-toed, street-hardened skinheads who are used to violence with traditional clan groups. The SPLC wanted to cripple the IKA by attacking the head of the organization, Ron Edwards. Well, what is particularly worrying about the IKA is they really threw open their doors to all kinds of people right across the radical right. And in particular, uh, they've uh, really kind of thrown out the welcome mat for uh, neo-Nazi skinheads. Now, skinheads tend to be a particularly violent bunch of people. For a fight. Fight back in the 
In 2007, Morris Dees, founder of the SPLC, brought a civil suit against the Imperial Wizard and IKA founder Ron Edwards on behalf of Jordan Groover. It sought $6 million in damages. The SPLC claimed that the IKA had instigated the attack by taking in young men with violent records, poorly training them, and then encouraging them to do violence. Uh, say white power, white power. Hell in 88. We had to convince the jury that even though Ron Edwards did not send them to this specific fair, even though he did not know they were going, he didn't tell them to beat anybody up, that he was still responsible. Ron Edwards decided to represent himself. I wish I was a lawyer just like him to uh, dramatize everything so well. Edwards had money for a lawyer but says he couldn't find one who would represent him. If you can't produce his evidence, you can't say it in an opening statement. And I tried, and I've tried a lot of lawyers. I even laid $10,000 that I borrowed uh, on a lawyer's desk to even try to retain him, and he told me that he would not represent the Klan. Ron maintained that he was not responsible. He felt that he would not be held liable because he was uh, naive enough to think that because he didn't know they were going to be there, that he wasn't liable. I did not even know they were there. As the trial progressed, Ron's inexperienced self-defense weakened. The IK should be held responsible for what? Check, Your Honor. Okay, okay. Object, Your Honor. Sustained. The SPLC's key witness was 48-year-old Cale Kelly who insisted he had been a member of the IKA and that the group promoted violence. Ron Edwards tried to challenge his account, but kept breaking the rules of the court. Ron, I was a member of your unit. No, you weren't. You never was a member. Hey, Mr. Edwards, okay. you can't argue. You can okay. ask him questions. Okay, I object. He, okay. He and object. Okay. You can ask him questions, <clears throat> and you have to take his answer. I was going to, when they tried me, just sit there and not say nothing. Just sit there at the bench and not say a word. The judge called me up. I said, sorry, Your Honor, I don't know how to do any of this. Mr. Edwards, when you ask a question, yes. he answers it. Yes. But you don't comment on the answer. OK, we have an understanding there? But I didn't. I, I just didn't know. I'm not a lawyer. I have no further questions. He's fine. The trial lasted three days. If these men uh, uh, assaulted a white man, would this case be heard today in this courtroom? I thank you. The jury deliberated for seven hours. Jury has come back in. Then returned its verdict. Uh, uh, is this the verdict that's just been handed to me? In favor of the SPLC. Ron Edwards' inducement or encouragement was a substantial factor in causing injuries and damages to Jordan Groover. The answer is yes. Ron Edwards was ordered to pay $1.3 million in damages to Jordan Groover. I'm in a politically incorrect organization that is not popular for our beliefs. You know, let them crucify me because I'm the big, bad racist and hater. This is Morris D's way to try to break down the IKA. Between him and I, we hate each other. The IKA was dealt a near fatal blow, but not for long. Like their ancestors before, they would rise from the ashes, ready to do battle. Marty! Marty! The IKA will live on! The IKA will live on! The IKA will live on! November 2008. Brandenburg, Kentucky. 12 years after Ron Edwards revitalized the KKK by forming the Imperial Clans of America, he lost a $1.3 million judgment for the beating of 16-year-old Jordan Groover by two of his Klan members. All the plaintiff's lawyers have shown you throughout this trial was what my beliefs are. Ron stepped down as Imperial Wizard but he still lives at the IKA compound outside of Louisville and consults for the group. I'm always gonna believe in the Klan and I'm always gonna work for it, but I basically wanna just let somebody else take the lead. Ron
Vermont is appealing the court's decision. And in spite of the damaging lawsuit by the Southern Poverty Law Center, Ron says the IKA will survive. We learn from each thing that happens, and we adapt, we overcome, but we're not going anywhere. If anything, some see current events as fertile soil for the IKA's hateful beliefs. We're seeing a kind of perfect storm of factors that favor uh, the recruitment uh, possibilities of these groups. Continuing high levels of non-white immigration, the worsening uh, economy, and then the election of Barack Obama as president. All of those things together, uh, I think, clearly create a situation which is really fertile for recruitment. People get depressed, you know, and they want to be with people like them. And that's when they'll seek out groups like us that support brotherhood. And when people don't have food, they don't have jobs, they don't have water, and they have hungry children, there's going to be a lot of chaos. So I'd like to know who my friends are, and so would the IK. The IKA keeps its membership numbers secret, but membership in similar hate groups rose by 54% from 2000 to 2008. In April 2009, the Department of Homeland Security issued a warning that right-wing groups were gaining recruits and momentum, raising the specter of increased domestic terrorism. Gun sales to private citizens have risen across the country. One of my friends went to a gun shoot a couple weeks ago. He said that place was packed to get in there and citizens buying guns left and right. Now, you think every citizen in that place was a Klansman or a neo-Nazi or a skinhead? That was regular citizens. So, I mean, people are worried. The Klan sees these everyday citizens as new recruits. They are actively enlisting candidates online while promoting white supremacy, hatred of other races, and white global unity. I would say 20 years ago, the average Klansman uh, had almost no success in getting his message out to potential followers or recruits. That has changed in a fairly dramatic way, largely because of the internet. We can go worldwide. We've got chapters in different countries on different continents that we can communicate with in just a matter of seconds. Joel Gaddis considers himself a member for life and sees nothing but growth for the Klan. Everybody's really starting to look now and to pay attention. So now is a really good time to start trying to talk to people. After serving two years for the assault on Jordan Gruber, Jared Hensley was kicked out of the gang in keeping with its bylaws. I was locked up, put in prison as part of the constitution of them, just to kick out all the members that uh, get in any trouble or anything. In 2009, he joined a new skinhead group called the SWA, or Supreme White Alliance. The SWA has over 300 registered members. He sees his group as more aggressive than the IKA, but says their vision of the future is the same. A world where white people live on their own. Nice white families living on land, you know, uh, tilling your own land and getting your own farms together, plowing your own land, uh, you know, slaying your own food, you know, without a crime, without a, you know, any worries in life. It's a white power utopia the IKA says will exist, one way or another. Sooner or later, this country's going to have a civil war. Everybody's just a half-breed running around the country. We can take our country back! If they're gonna be so ignorant as to run away and you'd be scared of us, then f them. If we got sued and didn't have a penny, the IKA is always somebody to step in somebody else's shoes. Keep the fight going. We'll be back, IKA. Black Power!